Hi everyone, my name is Roman Lewis, and in this video, I'm gonna be turning this Moreton Bay Ash log into a bookcase. This project's been in the pipeline for about 13 months. Back then, my local sawyer contacted me with a client who wanted a tree cut down and then turned into a piece of furniture. He doesn't do the woodworking side of things commercially, so he got me involved. The two of us went out there, met her, got the tree loaded up, he did the milling, and about six months after that, dropped it off with me for the final drying process. Now, I don't want to exaggerate the stakes of this project, but it's worth noting that this bookcase has to be made from this tree. There's only one tree. If I make a mistake, I can't just pop down to the lumber yard and pick up some more. Not only is this timber relatively hard to find, but it has to come from this tree. So any cuts that I'm about to make going forward, there's gonna be a lot of thinking, checking, double checking, and I'm going to question everything more than I usually would because there is only one shot at this. Looking at the boards, my original goal was to use as little glue as possible and use solid pieces of timber the whole way around. But I think what I'm gonna actually do now is cut up those real nasty boards, the ones where the termites have gone straight through, and then laminate those together and use those as the shelves. That way I'm gonna have a much better choice and I can pick out the best boards to be on the outside of the bookcase. The bookcase needs to be a meter tall by half a meter wide. These slabs were milled to around 30 millimeters thick and I need them down at 20, so I'll square up two edges at the jointer and then run them through the thicknesser. I finished roughly milling these boards up to where I want them, but I'm going to leave them in the shop now for a while to acclimate and get rid of any stress before I do the final milling. So while that's going on, I'm going to pick out the boards that I want to use for the two sides, the bottom and top, and start milling those up. To fill the gaps, I'm going to be using West Systems Epoxy with the slow hardener. And I'm going to be doing this in two pours. If I was trying to do it in one pour, it would almost certainly blow through the masking tape that I'm going to use to hold in place. So what I'll do instead is pour one very thin layer, and then once that's hardened, that will hold the second pour in place. When this timber was originally milled, it was done pretty well, so it's quite flat as it is. But what I'm going to do to make sure that it's definitely flat is use a router jig. The jig or sled is just two pieces of steel square stock clamped down to my bench, and then I'll take this melamine sled and run the router across this back and forth, and that will flatten the top. Once I have this side flattened, I will flip it over and run that through my thickness jointer and then I'll have two flat parallel sides. It was during this session that I decided to fork out for a proper dust collector for my thicknesser. After all this milling, the entire shop was covered in a fine layer of red dust and it went everywhere. And for those of you wondering, those black lines are called gum veins. After that, it was a few touch-ups with epoxy. For some reason, I just couldn't get these boards through my thicknesser without tear out. And then it was back onto the shelves from earlier. With the glued up shelves drying, I could get back to the full panels and I started by squaring them up. This has to be some of the toughest wood I have ever worked with. Planing was chaotic, but it's because the grain was all over the place. Even with a freshly sharpened blade, admittedly at a lower angle than I probably needed, I could not get any clean shavings. So the best I could do was get the edges square and flat and then use a sander to finish it off. And with one edge taken care of, I could cut the other three around it. Oh. 
Next up were the dados and I made sure to do all of my cuts while the boards were butted together, mirroring each other. That way if the spacing between the shelves were slightly off, it wouldn't affect the level of the shelves. And when you're a few millimeters different over 250 millimeters, you'd never notice without actually measuring it. I removed the center of the dados freehand, then did the edges afterwards with a guide. This might be an extra step, but I'd rather remove less material on my final pass, so I have better control of the router. A fresh chisel to remove the rounded corners, and the dados were done. This is the setup that I'm going to be using to cut the tenons into the shelves. I've dialed this in separately using a piece of plywood just to make sure that I get all my measurements correct and I'm very happy with the fit. This is going to be my guide to set up the fence for my router to ride along. So as long as this combination square stays set up like this and no one is allowed to touch this, <laughs> then all of my shoulders will be the same size. Before going any further, I just want to make a quick note of something. This cut was made using a spiral router bit, a down cut spiral router bit to be precise. This is my first time using one of them and they are absolutely worth the extra investment. This is a particularly cheap one, so I don't know how long it's going to last, but just that peace of mind and confidence knowing that you're not going to get any tear out or blow out when you're cutting something like ingrain is just absolutely worth spending the extra money. There was one side of one shelf done, five more to go. Next I'll get started on the joinery. I'm going to be using dowels for this. The dados are really there just for alignment when I glue it all together. They do add a little strength, but it's more about fit. I'm going to be using this jig to make sure that I inset the shelves in about seven millimeters, which is going to make space for the six millimeter panel at the back. It's just a piece of wood with two tabs glued underneath. That's going to make sure that I get the seven millimeter clearance. And then on the other side, there's a notch for the shelf to slide into. And then I've got this other piece, which I'm going to be able to use on the other side of the shelf. And this is going to allow me to slide it in and out of the mortise repeatedly so that when I go to punch holes for my dowels, I'm going to be able to get it bang on in the right spot. I've camped up the bookshelf making sure that this is entirely square. So I've checked the diagonals, this is square. The next thing I've got to do is work on the bottom piece, which is this one over here, and the top piece at the top. Now for the bottom panel, I'm going to be cutting a dado and then creating a tenon on the bottom of the shelf. And after that I could work on the top panel and I'd originally decided to dowel it in place but my cut was saying something wasn't quite right about doing that. So I went online, did a bit of research, uh, spoke to all the guys on the I like to make stuff group and it turns out that dowel joinery from a vertical lift perspective is not a good idea. Now in the case of the bottom I'm still going to glue it in place but then I'll drive some screws in from underneath so that's quite easy to take care of. The top on the other hand is a little more tricky because I want to be able to hide the joinery. Obviously I can't screw down through the top. So I'm going to have to go back to one of my tried and tested methods which is the figure eight clips. I've used those before. They always work fantastic. I was really hoping to get around that and hide the joinery completely and I do kind of still believe that if I was to cut a uh, dado and mortise that join with the dowels, it would still be very strong, but because it just seems to unanimously be a bad idea, 
I think I'm just gonna have to go for the figure eights, which makes the next step a lot easier. Now I could pull the whole thing apart and cut a rebate around the inside to accept the plywood back panel. Adding a panel like this is to stop the bookshelf from racking and it's one of the easiest ways to strengthen it up. If you were going to design the bookcase without that back panel, a lot more care would have to be taken around the joinery. But adding a solid plywood panel like this to the back means that there's almost no chance that this bookcase can rack unless you apply some serious force. Three coats of wipe-on polyurethane on all of the surfaces and that'll do it. I ended up doing five coats of finish. The, the three coats just didn't really get me to the finish that I wanted. Um, so it ended up taking a couple of days, but I got here in the end, the boards are all ready. They can now be glued up. Because these boards are pre-finished, I'm paying very special attention to how I clamp them up to make sure that I don't damage the finished surface with the clamps. So I'm gonna take my time with this one. I'm gonna do each shelf individually. Once all three of them are into this side panel, I'll then do the next side panel. And then from there, I can glue on the bottom and screw on the top. I'll leave this overnight now, and then when I come back in the morning, everything will be dry, and then I can do the other two parts, which are gonna be way easier than this. Considering I've decided to put this bottom panel on with screws, I'm not worrying about gluing these dowels in place. All these are being used for now is alignment. those wheels. You know, ultimately this was a pretty straightforward project. There's some dowel joinery going on, there's some panels couple of mortises and that's pretty much it but there's something about taking a tree like a tree that was literally just in the ground cutting it up going through the, the, the process of drying it which is always going to take a while and ending up with a piece of furniture to me that is probably one of the, the greatest feelings when woodworking as opposed to just going out saying buying your own lumber now of course this is nothing new and, and ultimately this is what woodworking is regardless of how you do it but as someone who's still coming up and still relatively new, there's something so exciting about taking a tree that was once a tree and going through that whole process. It just makes it so much more special. So this is gonna be a piece that the client will love purely from the perspective that it used to be a tree in the yard. And I feel very humbled and, and lucky to be able to work on a project like this where someone has said, please take this tree and through a process of time and skill, turn it into a piece of furniture. So. I, I feel quite lucky that I've been able to do this with it. Thanks for watching, my name is Robin Lewis, and if you like this video, please go ahead and click that thumbs up. And if you enjoy this type of content, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe. These are the types of videos that you'll find 
on my channel. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you guys soon.